Jake here from Jake's Opinion. Thanks for checking out my video again. Obviously, the round 13 is over and we're going to check out what I got right and what I got wrong. So let's get straight into the games. So for the first game, it was Friday night, Sydney v Geelong. I tipped Geelong for that game, hoping that they would just, you know, the big names Bartel, Chapman, Johnson would just come through and take the points. Unfortunately, I got that one wrong. Sydney just won by six points, although for about three quarters they were a good four or five goals ahead consistently. And then Geelong somehow found a way to come back and actually hit the lid in the last quarter for only Andreas Everett to kick the winning goal from Sydney in the last minute and a half. It's a bit worrying that past two games Sydney have been miles ahead against Essendon and now Geelong and they've basically surrendered the lead in the last quarter. So a bit fitness issue there, I'm not too sure, but main thing is they've gotten the wins and they're pushing top four. But I got that tip wrong and that's a disappointment. So for the next game it was Bulldogs taking on Brisbane. I tip Bulldogs, I'm pretty sure a lot of you did as well, 91% of the people in my tipping competition did. All of them of which left disappointed as the Bulldogs got smashed and were never actually in the game. Bulldogs just need to find some avenues to goal, I mean, there was a space from the second quarter to the fourth quarter where they actually didn't kick a goal, which is very worrying, especially against Brisbane who have been leaking goals, they, they don't have the best defence. But neither, you know, Bulldogs don't really have a great forward line, but you'd think that they'd still be able to maneuver a few goals. They only kick seven in the game, so that's worrying. I'm worrying for me because I tipped them. So, disappointing loss, but we'll get on to the next game soon. And by soon, I mean right now. So we'll get straight into the game. It was Collingwood v West Coast 440 Saturday afternoon. It was a really good game. Collingwood took a stranglehold midway through the third. They got about 27 points up. Only for West Coast to come back and actually hit the front in the last quarter. I actually thought West Coast were going to run away with it. They had all the momentum. But then I think it was Dane Beams that got a free kick in the last quarter that put them in front and they just stayed in front. Even though for the remainder of the game, basically the last two minutes, the ball was kept in West Coast's forward 50. So they had a few chances, a few snaps at goal that just missed that they could have maybe stolen the game. But most of the game it was really Collingwood that deserved to win. I mean, they started on fire. They kicked the first three goals, but then from there it was basically a tug of war. It was pretty tight, contested, not really high scoring, 85 to 82. A lot of people think it's the preview for the, the grand final. I'm not sure what, what you guys think, but I think Collingwood are the team to beat at the moment. No matter who they put on the park, they seem to just win. There have been a lot of good teams with a lot of players that aren't 100% and a lot of players out. So that's pretty scary for the competition. West Coast, I think they're a pretty damn good team. They've got a great home record. They're unbeatable at Subiaco. They travel, they're getting better at their travel. Obviously they nearly beat Collingwood on their home turf in front of 70,000 of their own supporters. That's a good sign for West Coast supporters. You don't really tell much from this game because both teams gave it their all. It could have been a draw in the end. Both teams are going to be there in September. Potentially the grand final. I'm not too sure yet. I think it's still a bit early. I got the tip right, that's the main thing out of this, and yeah, definitely top two teams in the competition for me. Ah, beautiful. Hmm. My bad. Such a good bag, mate. Hmm. Getting on to the next game. This is a Saturday night game. Frio taking on Essendon. I tipped Essendon for this game, so thank god I got that tip right. It was 89 to 130 in the end. The scores didn't really reflect the closeness of the game. Freo were making most of the running up until the fourth quarter, up until the, really the last two minutes of the third, where Essendon kicked two very quick goals to draw themselves to back to within five points. They weren't even in front of this stage. And then in the last, they just kicked four goals and kept Freo to one point. And that really does reflect what I said in the last video, where I said it was going to be defence up against attack. Sure, Freo played Essendon's game, it actually worked into Essendon's hand, the shootout, where it was, you know, 13 goals to 14 at three quarter time. I didn't expect that to happen. I expected a more defensive game, and that's how it turned out in the end. Frio lost their run, went back into their shell, only kicked a point, I think it was possibly a rush point, not too sure, whereas Essendon kicked four goals and just consistently got it done. They kicked five in the first, five in the second, three in the third, and then again four in the last, whereas Frio went six, two, six, and then nothing. So they weren't very consistent. They did it for three quarters with that fast game plan. I'm not sure if they can actually do it on a consistent basis. They might need to go back to the old Ross Lyon, you know, defensive game plan, whereas Essendon can actually maintain it. They've been doing it 
ever since Heard came, really for the past four or five years with Maddie Knights as well. That's their game plan, fast, you know, reactive. They don't think too much, they just, it just flows. And in the end they got the job done. That gets me to two wins out of the past four. And we'll get on to the next game soon. Okay, so the Melbourne GWS game is over. Firstly, before I get into the tips, I'd like to apologise to all Melbourne supporters everywhere. I understand that you guys are pretty annoyed that I tip GWS and it's disrespectful and all that. Melbourne had a great win, first quarter was really exciting, six, six goals to five. The backstory to it all was obviously Tom Scully, Melbourne supporters hate him for leaving and you know he was the future and it would be great to see him in the Melbourne Guernsey but not to be. I expected a bit more from GWS to be honest, thought they'd make the most of their first outing ever at the MCG, especially with the genius Kevin Sheedy's their head coach and the good performance they showed against Richmond. It was a bit confident, you know, overconfident maybe, I thought, you know, it, it would have been a much closer game than that. The first quarter is exactly what I expected. They kicked five goals, Melbourne kicked six. I expected it to be like that for most of the game. Very open, uncontested, both teams just kicking a lot of goals. And, you know, with it being decided by maybe 20 points in the end or something like that. But didn't expect a big result like this for, for Melbourne, but it's good for them. They can hopefully get on a roll now, getting to understand, you know, Mark Neal's new game plan and hopefully see how they go in the future. Alright, so the last game of the round, the North Melbourne via lead game just finished. I tipped Adelaide and tipped them pretty comfortably. They were going into the game in red hot form after beating St Kilda and being up in the top three, I think. North Melbourne, very disappointing. Got smashed to Hawthorne, just beat Gold Coast. Very up and down, not really sure how to judge their form. They won, somehow. I don't know how this season's going. I don't know how one team can be awesome one week and then be crap the next week and then a team that's been crap suddenly becomes awesome, but it doesn't make sense. It's really good for viewing, but it's terrible for tipping because it's very unpredictable. And that shows in my tips this week because I only got two out of six. Hope they can do a bit better next week, but good win for North Melbourne. Reminded me a lot of their game against Geelong, a lot of handballing, a lot of running in rows and protecting each other from the tacklers. When Adelaide didn't really show much for the whole game, Tipper went off with a concussion, so that's a bit of a worry for them. Big game next week against Richmond, and North Melbourne have got St Kilda, so another big game. That's it for my round 13 tipping results. Thanks for watching. Remember to check me out on youtube.com slash Jake's Opinion, facebook.com slash Jake's Opinion, twitter.com slash Jake's Opinion 1, or my official blog, jakesopinion.me. Thanks very much.